Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the West Lindsay series. This is one of the nine districts of Lincolnshire and one of the county's most rural. It has 128 civil parishes. Let's see which one this episode's all about. Now then, you might recognise where I'm beginning this episode. Here's the playing field that I walked onto last week in the Normanby by Spittle episode. And today I'm heading south from Normanby by Spittle to cover its almost conjoined neighbour. This is Ownby by Spittle. West Lindsay series is sponsored by Gaines Recycles 01427 617 752. For all your cycling needs, this is your one stop shop. Located at 20 Ropery Road or online at gainsrecycles.com. There's a link in the description. Gaines Recycles, ask for Trevor Halstead. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. We're getting the parish notice board out of the way before we even begin walking today. Our start point for Ownby by Spittle is the community park, which is shared with neighbouring Normanby. Much like its larger northern neighbour, Ownby by Spittle is situated two miles away from the A15, 11 miles north of Lincoln and eight miles west of Market Raisin. The first major landmark is a school which was built here in 1836, but it was closed by 1881. Ownby was then united with Normanby into the school board district mentioned last week. Until 2011, this place was known just as Ownby. It still gets referred to as its much shorter name now, but officially, this is now Ownby by Spittle. The Spittle part, once again referring to Spittle in the street. Ownby means Orn's Farmstead. It's had various spellings and incarnations, including in the 1600s, Ownby Juxta Normanby, literally meaning next to. Once again, this is a place that fell within the ancient Aslaco Wapentake of West Lindsay. The largest landholder at the time of Doomsday was the Bishop of Lincoln. Other landholders in 1086 included Bishop Odo of Bayou, Ivo Tallboys and Jocelyn's son of Lambert. Ownby's history goes back much further than that though. For any community to develop and survive, there must be water readily available for the community, for crops and for livestock. The vale that Ownby sits in has an abundance of streams. That's one of the main reasons why this string of settlements, including Ownby and Normanby, developed in the vale from north to south. The Romans also had a hand in this area too. There was a significant Roman settlement to the west of Ownby, with the site of a fort adjoining Ermine Street, which today, of course, is known as the A15. So much like Highgate Lane in Normanby by Spittle, if you follow this road, it just runs off into the countryside. So there's no point going down there. What we are going to do though, is turn around and head for Church Lane. Now we're heading down Church Lane, which will take us around the rest of the village in a neat little loop. In keeping with the Roman theme, it appears Ownby itself was also inhabited by them. There are traces of a Roman villa approximately a mile further inward to the village from the fort at the A15. Significant Roman artefacts have been found at both sites. Ownby has also had finds from the Iron Age, including coins, fragments of pottery, storage jars, and a bronze pin decorated with enamel. Quite something for such a small place, that. 
If that wasn't enough, there was also a Neolithic Hengiform monument too. The Henge was a ritual or ceremonial centre connected with burials and dates back to the Middle and Late Neolithic periods. Now we're at the village church which is dedicated to St Peter and St Paul. Kelly's directory noted the church was built in 1808 with parts of the structure Norman and that it seated 200 people. It's handy when there's a bit of history right in front of your eyes too thanks to this note on the door. The church has three bells dating from 1687 but only one of them can now be rung. So after the disappointment I suffered in Cambie, if you can remember that episode where I couldn't get into the church at all, couldn't even get even outside it, Normanby by Spittles was open and so is this one here in Ownby by Spittle. Let's have a little explore of this one, shall we? There's the pulpit. The fonts over here. Plenty of light in this church thanks, thanks to this window. That's quite cool. Let's see if we can find some stained glass. There was a stained glass window over here. Over there, look. Okay. There's a memorial on the wall here. Or it looks like a memorial. I can't really read it. <laughs> it's a bit too much light in here to actually read what it says. There's a memorial there anyway. And then there's a one here. Eleanor Francis wife of James Gunning, James Gunning, surgeon. Oh, and also the remains of James Gunning as well. Okay. Oh, he's got a connection to Scotland, look. Annan, Scotland. Uh, let's go the other side. I quite like doing these church explores like this. There's one other thing I've noticed as well, over here, there's an organ. Now, in Normanby, yeah, I can't even say it, in Normanby by Spittle, um, the organ, oh, it's locked. The organ was, was, was like in the corner of the church. I tried just to play a few notes, but it wasn't working for some reason. And this one's not even, not even open. I'm not even gonna try and open it thinking about it. I probably won't be favorable with the locals if I try and open the organ. <laughs> Uh, oh, looks like there's a book exchange here as well, look, next to the organ. And there you go. That's the church here in Ownby by Spittle. Let's move on. Our walk runs back towards Ownby Cliff Road now, the main road through the village towards the A15. This passes some of the largest properties on offer here, mostly made of stone. Ownby has a notable person to mention, that being Bernie Topin, the English lyricist noted for his collaboration with Elton John. He grew up in the village. The village has no real amenities to speak of barring the church. Everything else is shared with Normanby. It has a boarding kennels to the west, but there's no pub, shop or post office. Mind you, there is a cricket ground which is sited a long way south of the village. Ownby Cricket Club play here and they were founded in 1903. You can also find a defibrillator on the side of this building. This is an old forge. By this point, I kind of exhausted everything there is to say about Ownby. If you come here, it's easy to just soak up the rural charm it has to offer and the relative peace and quiet of a gorgeous yet typical Lincolnshire village. Okay, that is it. I'm almost back at the car. I hope you've enjoyed this one and the previous one, Normanby by Spittle. These two villages are virtually conjoined, as I mentioned in that episode. They sort of form one great big village, if you like, but they are two separate civil parishes and they are two separate parish councils as well, and that's important because Ownby by Spittle also includes, population-wise at least, the population of the one I'm going to next which is to the south and it's very very small I would imagine it's probably not going to be much more than a five minute video and if you think that small the one that's coming after it which is to the south of that doesn't really exist believe that if you can <laughs> this has been the parish of Ownby by Spittle and I've been Andy also known as the village idiot and I'm out well, we're not quite finished yet. On the way to the next village, I passed the Brightwater Green Burial Meadow. I've seen this kind of thing before, but I've never been into one. 
A green burial meadow is like a cemetery. The big difference is though, there's no gravestones. Burials take place in areas of open, managed meadow interspersed with glades of native trees. All the graves are still clearly recorded to enable easy recognition in the future. This natural burial meadow is adjacent to an existing area of old meadow and woodland. The surrounding land has been farmed by a local family for 130 years. Brightwater's base is located in next week's village. Join me next week as we walk around that one.